और फोर so the host uh, welcome to the 99th edition uh, host has muted everyone the panelists can unmute themselves so today uh, we are have again having our friend uh, dr suresh bm who will be presenting on a very uh, appropriate topic preliminary assessment of children in conflict with law in accordance with the jj act uh, next slide please Uh, i am handing over the program to professor dr tofan pati sir he is from katak and chairman of this program sir over to you thank you arim thank you very much and i welcome everyone to this 99th episode of thursday musings one set of the centenary edition due next week 7th of july and we have a very good topic which will be uh, discussed dr suresh badamat Who is one of the prominent legal opponents in Indian psychiatric society? Next slide, please. Next one, please. Don't fix on me. Next one. Our moderators, Dr. Amrit Patuzhasi and Dr. Alim Siddiqui, both are vibrant members of Indian psychiatric society. Dr. Alim Siddiqui is the treasurer of IPS, and Dr. <coughs> Amrit Patuzhasi is the EC member. And both are professor of psychiatry in respective medical colleges. And may I go to the next slide, please? Dr. Jitendra Jingar Udaipur, our chairperson, the smart young man, vibrant too, is professor and HOD psychiatry of Gitanjali Medical College and Hospital, Udaipur. Currently, the general secretary of IPS Rajasthan chapter and treasurer of IPS North Zone. He has a total teaching experience of 16 years. He qualified up to North Zone India in the Young Psychiatry Scholarship Award 2008, winner of Gallot Award 2009. Solanke Award 2015, the Krake Kala Award 2020, and Professor Sidgotham Urasan Award 2019. But he has 20 publications in national and international journals. He is organizing secretary of six conferences and workshops. Completed advanced course in medical education conducted by MCI. Invited as a guest speaker in various workshops, seminars, and conferences. Welcome, mm -hmm. Dr. Jitendra Singh. Thank Next you so please. much. Thank you, sir. Thank. You. And next, Dr. Sanjay Garg is equally vibrant, young, dynamic psychiatrist from Kolkata. He is a senior consultant psychiatrist and a chair of psychiatry in Fortis Hospital, Kolkata. He is secretary of IAPP West Bengal State Branch, honorary treasurer of IPS West Bengal State Branch. He had been, and convener of ethics subcommittee of Indian Psychiatric Society. He is secretary of IMA Northwest Kolkata Branch. He is a founder of EU Noya. I will teacher campaigning for mental health awareness through media workshop and school liaison running a popular intensive program on annual drama festival get your act together for students welcome dr sanjay garg welcome dr jingar and dr garg from now on our this program this music is up to you please take over thank you so thank much you. thank you so much sir Uh, first of all i would like to congratulate team thursday musing dr tofan pati chairman of thursday musing dr alim bhai siddiqui and amrit pat joshi moderator and our friends and they are about to finish the century and completing their century of master class in psychiatry i am also i am very fortunate to be the part of 99th episode of this wonderful academic events thanks to the organizer for this opportunity the best part of thursday musing is like selection of the topic this time too they have selected very important topic preliminary assessment of child in conflict with laws juvenile justice act 2021 even we have not discussed these kind of topic during our pg days or even in like uh, routine academic uh, events so the various amendments has been done in la recent in 2021 in juvenile justice act i would not waste much of time i request our co chairman dr sanjay gar from kolkata to introduce our beloved and uh, uh, favorite speaker dr suresh badamat over to you sir 
thanks a lot again my big thank you to thursday musings for giving me this opportunity opportunity today especially on the 99th uh, episode and i'm really privileged to be honored to introduce dr suresh banamat i think he's one person who needs no introduction but still as a part of the formality i would like to not miss this opportunity so he is the head of the forensic psychiatric unit and legal aid clinic additional professor of psychiatry at nimhans bangalore he is a member of number of uh, associations and committees so he is a member of the committee of experts constituted by the ministry of health and sorry uh, i don't know why i can't see the screen mm -hmm. yeah so he is he is a member of the committee of experts constituted by the ministry of health and family welfare nirman bhavan new delhi for framing rules and regulations under the mental health care act 2017 he is member of the expert committee to advise karnataka state board to establish a rehabilitation center for mentally ill patients he is member of the state committee for drafting minimum standards for mental health establishment for the new raipur chatisgarh state and of course he has several publications in national and international journals it wouldn't end and of course his areas of research interest are forensic psychiatry community psychiatry telemedicine human rights of the persons with mental illness and obsessive compulsive disorder so without any further ado dr suresh it's all yours uh, thank you very much <clears throat> thanks for the organizing uh, committee and also Yes, sir. Directors, sir, please. We we don't have a detailed uh, introduction of Dr. Rajendra. Please do that on our behalf because you are. Sure, sure, person. sir. Sure, I'll do that, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, can you stop Ad sharing? Adrita, please stop sharing. Yeah. Can uh, the organizers can also make Dr. Rajendra came also the co-host uh, because he will also be speaking along with me. The reason being is uh, this uh, topic preliminary assessment. is assessment as you go through you will understand why i requested dr rajendra to be with me also and uh, actually as usual uh, dr alim called me around two days back and said that we want to fill this 99th uh, narus 99 uh, session so i am here with that uh, so dr rajendra km is now becoming associate professor uh, he is uh, working in child and adolescent psychiatry in nimhans bangalore he is my colleague and he's been working with child in conflict with law and also child who requires care and protection so in this background uh, with rajendra i'll be discussing about the issues of uh, how the preliminary assessment is to be done and we will these numbers are increasing day by day and this is the area which has been highly neglected and uh, if you look at our population children's population is around if you roughly you can take around 45 to 50 crore in that area depending upon whether you are considering less than 16 or 18 though jj act talks about 18 but there have been amendments i'll be discussing about those so in today's uh, topic i'll be discussing what is preliminary assessment what is the legal framework how to do the assessment and also the implications of these findings so with this let me start with one important quote if every saint has a past name the saint you can find their past is not good but they are saint now everybody likes them similarly every criminal has a future so now in this background we are talking about a juvenile who is in conflict with law and the whole society thinks them they are criminal they are born criminal and they need to be persecuted so that is the way we think but please understand if every saint has a past then every criminal has a future so with this i'll be moving to justice juvenile justice act which has been amended many times the major amendment occurred in 2015 it talks about two important population the child who is in need of care and protection and child in need of child in conflict with law these are the two population so here child in conflict with law means the child has committed a crime crime in the sense is in conflict we don't call it as a crime here it is in conflict with law the laws we have made the child because of various circumstances it has entered into it so in this area of the part of the leg this lesson it talks about if we don't call it as the child has been arrested we call it as apprehended detained or detention prosecution penalty or imprisonment along with this we are have to discuss about rehabilitation and social integration integration of this child so these are discussed in juvenile justice act 
with this the child in need of care and protection here there is a definition what does it mean the child who do not have parents who are on the streets who have been abused a disabled child those children who requires protection also been discussed in this law that is what is the procedure how the decision is made what are the orders how the rehabilitation reintegration is made with regard to child in conflict with law jj board comes juvenile justice board with regard to child in need of care and protection child welfare committee comes so these are the two important statutory bodies under this legislation now let uh, let's with this background let's enter into this preliminary assessment in heinous offense what does it means it comes under section 15 of the jj act here if a child is in conflict with law that is under section 15 of the jj act based upon the age nature of the offense and capacity to commit a crime this section 15 operates under that legal framework why this happened i will tell you here again we need to understand how the child is in conflict with law let me put one simple statistics across india there are 2 crore children who requires care and protection or they are called they are abandoned children 2 crore not 1 lakh 2 lakh 2 crore children imagine who requires care and protection they are abandoned and the society treats them as they are nobody they don't require and look at the number of children who are adopted not more than 30 to 40000 that's it so under this context imagine if the child who is on street the child has to survive in a ruthless society what are the impulsivity the child does if it is hungry if the child wants to do something what is the cognitive maturity of the child whether the child is able to think or not think about the child what is the peer pressure because it is on the street what does the other adults influence this child substance use in this child there is no supervision the child is from a broken family many a time socio economic status extreme poverty whether the child has been abused exploited various negative influences plays a crucial role when the child commits a crime or child is in conflict with law that is the best word to use because i may hurt many body many of children rights activist if i say child has committed a crime the best word is child in conflict with law that means you need to know the circumstances behind the child how it is in conflict with law without that you will say yes the child has committed a crime we need to punish the child the best example i can give you is if we come up with some law or legislation or guidelines many of you criticize you are in a ivory tower being in demands you make guidelines it is not applicable you don't know the ground reality what happens this is the commonest comment similarly here when a child commits a crime you need to know the ground reality under what circumstances the child has committed a crime and we need to rehabilitate the child you cannot put everybody on the same pedestal that is what is the jj act talks about now looking at the amendment why this section 15 came into picture the first and the foremost which occurred in 16th december 2012 was the nirbhaya case in that there were six accused one of them was a child remaining five were adults these adults were have a important play to role in pressurizing the child to do something of course the child was also convicted but the society became so angry about this case which there was a lot of angry unprecedented protest and actually the incident pierced the consciousness of our society that time many people came out and said even if it is a child we need to punish on that background the amendment occurred before that 2012 jj act section 8 section 15 did not talk about heinous crime or age below between 16 and 18 so since there was a huge fight then there was amendment made that amendment came in two picture one is section 375 rape law was amended so i request many of you if you don't know about the rape law which has been amended please go through that along with that jj act was also amended so that is section 
Now I will not enter into the rape law, what has been amended, but I will be discussing about section 15. In case of heinous offence, alleged to have committed by a child who has completed the age of 16 and below the age of 18, then the board will do preliminary assessment to see whether the child had a capacity to commit a crime, then we will treat it as an adult and we will punish that child as an adult. So that was the intention and there was an amendment done in the parliament, considering if the child is between 16 and 18, a preliminary assessment will be done. And this will be conducted by the JJ board. So here the preliminary assessment with regard is basically whether the child has a mental capacity, physical capacity, circumstances around the crime, and we should we treat this child as an adult and punish this child as an adult. Otherwise under JJ Act, any amount of crime, the maximum imprisonment or the punishment or the rehabilitation is two years. And the place of punishment will be different. And if the board here, if the child, if the board finds that the child is an adult, it will transfer to the court rather than it will be argued in JJ board. The court procedure is different. JJ board procedure is different. JJ board procedure, JJ means Juvenile Justice Board is more of friendly manner, whereas court will be a similar court. Now let's understand what is this heinous offense. So the amendment was earlier, JJ Act is all of them are children below the age of 18, juveniles below the 18. But after the amendment, 16 to 18, if they have committed a heinous offense, a preliminary assessment will be done and they will be considered as an adult or a juvenile and the proceedings will occur. What is this heinous offense? Any offense under any law at this point of time, if there is an imprisonment of more than seven years, seven or more than seven years, it will be considered as heinous offense. So these are the cases where the preliminary assessment will be done. And how, within how many days we have to do this assessment? Within three months after apprehending the child, the assessment should be completed. That means only three months has been given. What is the procedure for the assessment? Here, the procedure has also been clearly said under the Rule 10A of Juvenile Justice Act. Here, the board shall in the first instance, when the child is produced in front of the JJ board, and if the child is between 16 to 18 years, then the, the board will ask whether there is a requirement of preliminary assessment and whether the child should be tried as an adult. That is the question. So when the question is arised, then the preliminary assessment will be asked by the board. Then the assessment will start. The assessment basically looks into mental capacity, physical capacity, ability to understand the consequences of the offense, circumstances around the alleged offense the child has involved. Now, what is the weightage of this preliminary assessment? So why are we discussing that? The weightage is, it is, it is not going to play any role with regard to punishment. It is a preliminary assessment to decide whether the child has to be tried as a child or an adult. If you try it as a child, maximum punishment will be two years and it will be rehabilitation. If it is more than two years, Imagine the child will be sent to the prison after the age of 18 and it will be 10 years, maybe life imprisonment. Imagine if the child comes out of, uh, imagine at this 18 years it has been arrested or has been apprehended, sent to the prison. At the age of 28 or 30 when he comes out, what skills he has, what he will do and how we are going to reintegrate them into the society. These are the questions we need to understand. Ask also ourselves. Now the preliminary assessment. What is the procedure? It can be done either inpatient or outpatient. If, the, if you have already seen the child many times, you know about the child, you can do an outpatient. And if you are, if you are well versed, excellent. If you don't know about the child and the family, the best advice would be to do the inpatient assessment. Because the procedure is long. And the board, JJ board has to do the preliminary assessment, but the JJ board can ask assistance from the mental health professionals. So mental health professionals, psychiatrists, psychologists, or psychiatric social work. So you need to collect information when you do the preliminary assessment. What are those assessment? One is if you are able to get the social investigation report, if you are able to get the social background report, excellent because half of the job is done. But unfortunately, these reports are not available many a time. You need to request 
the jj board to provide this report many a time they don't provide when you are able to have a good licensing with the jj board they will provide third one is drug report physical capacity mental capacity and the detailed psychiatric evaluation has to be done because you are dealing with the child's life here not only that it is a mirror of the society when we deal with the children now let's understand about the first one social investigation report this social investigation report is again clearly been documented there is a form 6 under the rules and it clearly talks about who is to do this this is done by a probationary officer or a voluntary or an ngo the form 6 is clearly talks about the child's economic condition condition social condition psychosocial condition under what circumstances the child has committed a crime whether the family is very poor they are, they are they are fighting to survive imagine during covid you can see what kind of difficulties many population underwent and many children the parents were not able to work and the children were begging so think about those situation and how the child has committed the crime this is how the sir report looks like this and i'll be sharing those reports uh, to the organizers you can you can also download from the net so this is social investigation report it will be done by the ngo or a probationer officer similarly there will be a social background report which will be done by the child welfare police officer this is a very important report and this report invariably plays a crucial role with regard with regard to rehabilitation or whether the child should be punished or not all those things will be discussed or will be determined on this sbr invariably the jj board doesn't share this report but if you request if you have a good rapport they will share this again social background report this is the format i will not go into the detail because none of the mental health professional will be involved in this but it gives a lot of information with regard to so sir and sbr report is done then means 50% of your job is done if you don't get that means you have to do the rest of the 100% the next one is drugs and sub substance use report here you need to take the history of the substance use either in the especially with the child if the parents are there check about this drug abuse in them substance use what was the family condition whether the family history of substance use there whether the child committed the crime or involved in the crime under the influence of the substance or to procure the substance the child was involved you may have to consider during urine examination so of the child with regard to drug abuse so this whole thing will considered as a drug report you need to ask for this or you have to do this mental capacity here the ability to understand the consequences of, of the offense and the circumstances in, in which the alleged offense was committed see here you need to understand imagine if a child around the age of 16 is committing the crime or involved in the crime it is not that whether the child knows he will be arrested you have to understand what is the knowledge of the child in the environment what does the child thinks if i do this act what will be the status in the society how the friends will behave how his peers will behave the society will look at him whether the police how they will behave what will be the repercussions you need to consider the cognitive development of the child if you feel the child's cognitive development is not been done you need to consider iq assessment here it is not just whether the child committed a crime and he knows yes he will be punished it's not just that simplistic it's a complex assessment of knowing whether the child under what circumstances the crime was committed or involved in that and it also involves what is the educational status of the child whether the child has been studying what is the intelligence whether the child has any disability mental disability whether there was a preparation planning number of people involved whether the adult or the mentor who is involved with the child peer pressure whether the adults are influencing the child to do commit the crime whether there was a motivation for the crime was there was it a impulsive what was the nature of the crime whether there was an attempt to destroy the evidence by the child or by the adults around whether there is a threatening of the witness escaping absconding surrendering to the police all those needs comes under the mental capacity so once this part have you are able to understand you need to move to the physical capacity physical capacity is whether the child has a disability how many people were involved in the crime amount of force involved in the alleged crime number of people involved height weight whether the child can do this so called alleged offense alone or with requires of an assistance or a weapon those will be considered here 
coming to the detailed psychiatric evaluation this is where as a psychiatrist you have to play a major role here you will be taking the basically detailed demographic details reason for referral what are the accompanying documents from the jj board that is juvenile justice board details of the charges framed or history of presenting illness past history family history of whether the broken family is there substance use in the family is there is there any family history of abuse personal history temperamental history of the child mental status examination and cognitive function along with this you need to do environmental issues this is one which we have to do especially in children whether the child had any antisocial behavior or we can call it, call it as a dissocial behavior whether it is in the family context whether the child has apathy attitude towards the crime how the child behaves with that truancy is there whether there is any past crime whether there is the child is involved with the antisocial associates or friends this is the most common phenomena which we see so school what is the whether the child is regular drop out what was the reason for drop out whether it is a finance what is the family how whether there was a poverty involved so all these will consider as a psychiatric evaluation with this now i will come to the last part that is what is the format for preliminary assessment this plays a very crucial here to know or to evaluate the role of the child in the alleged offense and also to know the mental condition and background which the offense was done here the report needs to provide the information on the child's mental condition and also background you need to do the development level of the child family history relationship school and education involvement in child labor peer relationship experience of abuse trauma will play a very important role in the assessment it also provides the information on any mental health disorder the child has or developmental disorder the child has finally when you give the report you are not going to just comment on the whether the child should be tried as an adult or a child you need to talk about the rehabilitation intervention of the child that is the spirit of the jj act that means you are going to reintegrate the child into the society in this regard the jj act is very clear even if the child has committed a major crime or involved in the major crime that fir will be destroyed or it will be kept in the court nobody will be accessing this report and if the child is involved in any crime at the age of 16 17 or 18 that will not be used for him to get into a job maybe government job or any other job as per the legislation even if there is a fir that means the jj act talks about rehabilitation and reintegration of the child that's the very essence of this legislation let's go into the preliminary assessment format this is basically demographic details if you are able to provide the date of admission or date of assessment started date of final completion or the date of discharge now here the first part comes is mental and physical capacity to commit an alleged offense these are the headings you need to comment whether the life skill deficit is there life skill deficits which we talk about all the 10 life skills whether the child had any deficits in this area so that needs to be commented if there is there you have to please say yes the child has problem in these areas whether there was a neglect poor supervision by the family member or how the role model imagine the father himself is using substance he is himself has been part of various anti social behavior so then the child has a role model clearly experience of abuse and trauma regarding the child sexual abuse substance abuse whether the child has any intellectual disability mental health disorder if the child has any already psychiatric illness was there any access for treatment whether the treatment was given or not how much serious about the treatment is to be considered this part forms the a. that means you need to give a good report along with this you need to the second part to be circumstances of the alleged offense family history and relationship how the child has the relationship in and around within the family along with the peers if there is a schooling history of education whether the child labor is there whether the child is been forced to go for work what are the role of the peers where did it learn all these conflict with law how it happened whether the abuse and trauma comes repeatedly because that plays a crucial role mental health disorder and developmental disability and the third part is child's knowledge of consequences and committing the alleged offense here you need to be very innovative in asking questions you can't ask a straightforward question do you know whether you will be arrested when you commit a crime because invariably the child has been apprehended by the jj board or the police who are uh, those 
you can't ask direct question because invariably after committing the crime after involving the conflict with law the child has been taken into custody the child will learn and the parents will be asking such questions do you know the way they will hit you they will put you in the prison they will put you in gallows they will give you murder they will hang you all those things will be there the child invariably learns before it comes in front of you so you need to be very innovative ask if somebody else does this what will be the impact what does the friends will tell what does the society will do what is the role of the police what does it mean by punishment those are the question you need to be very clear and you have to be have patience in asking those questions and other observation with regard to child's temperament observation during the interview in the school in the society what is the child's ideology about violence whether the child wants to change whether there are any deliberate self harm tattoos those are the things you have to consider that is the fourth part final is the recommendation recommendation should be not only towards the child family reintegration family therapy rehabilitation and it should be with the best interest of the child and also we need to talk what the child wants to do this is the rough how you are going to do the assessment now i'll be coming commenting about this section 15 challenges and opportunities if you look at the basic premise of child rights commission or child rights act and even justice js verma committee when there was a uproar with regard to nirbhaya case the justice verma committee refused to reduce from 18 to 16 it says we are violating the child rights committee's convention hence it went on to say it we will keep it at 18 but unfortunately because of the societal uproar the parliament considered to reduce from 18 to 16 and consider the cognitive ability physical ability and alleged offense circumstances that will be taken into consideration so that means whether we are violating child rights act convention which we have signed and we have our own act commission of protection of child rights act of 2005 so we have these two legislation and there is an amendment so this is a, again it may be considered as educational debate but there is a issue whether we should go back to 18 or 16 to 18 now just because the capacity mental capacity of assist should be tried as an adult can you assess a capacity thoroughly let's be let us understand capacity is dynamic in nature and it depends upon the act by act or depending upon what you are going to assess and when the judicial process occurs or when the child is taken to the jj board there are many people will be telling the child you have done this you should have not done they will be tutoring the child that means the child is going to gain the capacity even if it has done the crime without knowing it because it says within 3 months but unfortunately in india what has happened is as i said it is between 16 to 18 some of the cases below before 18 it occurs dr rajendra will be seeing them in nimans because it is child once if the child the assessment crosses after 18 it will be coming to forensic psychiatry that is adult for me invariably what happens by the time the child goes to the jj board they apply for bail or the child invariably the rule of thumb is the child will be given custody by the parents and by the time the child is brought to the jj board and the preliminary assessment is asked the child will be crossing the 18 years now after 6 months or 1 year if you do the assessment is it valid when the law says it is less than 3 months you have to do but it doesn't happen in majority of the case at this point of india why the reason being is do we have so much of child psychiatrist do many of our dmhp psychiatrist working in the district mental health hospital do they know about preliminary assessment whether even jj board many of them when they send should you ask preliminary assessment now or later so the awareness is very very poor and immediate assessment is not done and many a time they have been seen by untrained counselors unfortunately because we don't have so many child psychiatrists or child psychologists even we have psychiatrists there are hardly 9000 maybe and child psych psychologist maybe around 2000 or 3000 maximum 5000 psychiatric social workers maybe 5000 so imagine for the population of around 45 crore children do we have those resources and pressure to assess in a limited time they say the child is brought along with the police and say please give the report now only rajendra knows how much they will be pestering for the report and many a time 
they will refuse to come back again so that it it's it's a and many time we do this in a mechanical fashion by looking at the face of the child you say the child looks in a disheveled manner you say the child is knows the capacity and you by your own thinking process or your cognitive error invariably you say the child has the capacity and you want to just throw the child out into the gallows that happens day in and day out please don't do that and even if you do the assessment do we have family intervention available everywhere do we have de addiction clinics for children because many a time these children when they involve in this conflict with law either they are addicted to the internet mobile phone many a time this crime is occurring because of the internet related many arrests are occurring now do we have those resources to treat them and can we do the follow up of these children what will happen to these children in india there is a poor information about these children when they do this crime so actually rajendra and our team is planning to do a study who have been assessed what is happening how many of them will develop into a antisocial personality disorder or they can be integrated back into the society to conclude my dear friends every child in conflict with law is a child in difficult circumstances it is that reflects the society how we are treating the child not telling the child is a criminal that's that's the completely reflection because child nobody is born as a criminal the child will be a reflection of the family reflection of the society so how you are going to treat the child will be the reflection of the society so we have to make an opportunity that is the reason we fight right to child's education right to family right to rehabilitation that should be the essence and uh, with this i request uh, dr rajendra to add some more points over to you rajendra please you can unmute rajendra please i request the uh, okay thank you rajendra yes sir yes sir so uh, few things to add on to what sir has said like uh, in cases uh, we see uh, like as sir highlighted that there will be uh, family pathology related to uh, father usually having alcohol abuse and uh, there were discord the children are exposed to second word factor which we commonly see in the uh, consultations are they tend to be not uh, in the school environment because of one or the other factors financial lack of interest difficulty in studies below average intelligence so usually most of them will have experience in child labor they tend to earn their livelihood they tend to make decisions and choices so that is a fourth lastly they tend to have influenced by deviant peers so as sir was highlighting that they are the reflection of uh, the society like uh, like what society does to them they will uh, do that back to us so these are the dominant factors which we get highlighted when we do the assessment usually most of the children have guilt and remorse they have motivation to uh, change they have uh, good future views to take up the responsibility of the caregivers and they want to uh, have a good uh, life where they don't want to involve in such activities most of such situations happens when they are with some adults when they are in some inappropriate situations where there were fights going between the adults and this child was there around the child was working in a, a bar or a restaurant where there was alcohol was served and he was there so there are many such situations where they are one of the member in that uh, uh, in the uh, crime that they have been alleged so usually when we do the assessment what we tend to see is that the parents will have a sense of helplessness usually if there is a single mother or if there is uninvolved father so our whole uh, effort in the assessment process is to understand the risk factors in the process of development and reflect in the preliminary assessment same you reflect to the child and the parents in a session that we can do what we call it as functional family therapy a small uh, session of such sort where we tend to identify the risk factors how we would have contributed to the life skill deficits of the child how we can empower the accompanying parent 
so that that uh, parent can take the situation to train the child to stay away from the deviant peers to be uh, again back into the school to be into a job training he will take this responsibility and uh, assure to the judge that i will do all this and i will come and report to you so taking this chance to empower the parents to reflect the whole uh, understanding that we can have to the child and family so that they can make a plan and making the child to make this plan and give it to the uh, uh, jjb so this is uh, a few more efforts that we do uh, so that uh, that along with the assessment that feedback and the process driven work that can be done with the child and family who come to us so uh, usually if at all when we see a cases where there is a crime is of very serious nature like there is a murder culpable homicide and it has been in a repeated attempt or a first attempt we can add on a uh, few factors called as uh, factors risk factors for recidivism uh, so there are around 6 10 factors we can list down uh, based on the child's uh, association how much deep is the association with the deviant uh, social groups how far it has he has been involved as he has anger issues as he has substance issues is he can be uh, as the family can be empowered to look after him or he will not allow so those residual risk, risk factors for residual can be highlighted and it can be told that this person should be directed to work on this factors so with this uh, i think i will be i mean i have added something to the presentation and thank you sir thank you rajendra and i would like to also highlight that uh, the regarding the child assessment with regard to conflict with law or in the child welfare committee especially child requiring support they have made videos that is available on youtube uh, you can access those whenever there is assessment to be done and uh, please understand the essence of juvenile justice act we are dealing with the children and the children will become the way we are in the society uh, let me give one simple example is uh, this, this is one example my teacher used to say that is dr kishore who is in uh, who was in community psychiatry he used to say you put any donkey in nimans he will become a horse that means the environment in nimans is so good that if you put any kind of student he will become good if you put a horse into a bad environment the horse will never be a horse it will become donkey so it is the environment which plays a uh, crucial role in children so that the way the teachers are there in a medical college the students will become like that if the teachers are excellent in ethical way the way they conduct themselves the way they deal with various other agencies the students also will behave in that way so this is a simple example i can say how the society treats the children so we need to consider those context how the child has involved in this conflict the context is not only the environment what is the condition what was the reason the child has entered into it whether it was planned whether it was impulsivity all those context has to be taken before you give this report because that report will decide whether the child will be in the prison for 10 to 20 years or else the rehabilitation occurs uh, over to the chairpersons thank you so much sir wonderful presentations uh, over to chairpersons for their opening remarks uh, that was a wonderful presentation uh, thanks a lot dr suresh paramat it was very informative as well uh we do know that yes there are many children who suffer simply because of the lack of services that we have in a country and as you pointed out that we are a very resource starved uh, country it is a real challenge and especially what i face day in and day out as you mentioned is often these requests come in at a very late moment with huge time constraints asking you to do it in a one off assessment in a few minutes <laughs> if not ask and that becomes a real challenge as a private practitioner especially like ourselves when we are in private practice so what would you suggest sort of like uh, how can we do that in a more simplified manner if there is any uh, i would rather uh, we are again thinking about this uh, even dr rajendra we have discussed we would like to start at the earliest with regard to forensic psychiatry some kind of post uh, diploma course for all our psychiatrists 
psychologist, social worker, so that they can be enabled to do justice. Because without human resources, we will not be able to do justice to the children because we will be just giving the report which are physical in nature, which do not have any essence of soul in our report. It's, it's basically taking mark and then saying, yes, the child has uh, the capacity, deal this rogue in a different way. That, that is the way uh, that should not happen. We need to be doing justice what we are supposed to do. For that, we require a huge amount of resources and we need to train them. So most probably we have been already discussed even with, even with our director, Professor Pratima Murthy. We may start at the earliest because we need to have the army of uh, people because we are not just talking about small numbers. We are talking about 45 crore. It is more than US population. US, UK population combined. So many children we are having and every day in every district, the JJ board are seeing day in and day out crimes. Uh, basically, these kinds of uh, misled children are being involved. So we need to train. That is the first important thing. And uh, another one thing, I don't know, I may irritate many of our colleagues. Uh, the psychiatry and mental health services should not just uh, should not be pertained to only to our mental health professional. We need to move out of it. We need to involve many other people in the society uh, because. Uh, I don't know, many people will become angry. Only psychiatrist has to do, only clinical psychologist has to do, only psychiatrists, no. We have to have more people to, uh, to deal this situation because family therapy, family counseling, child integration, child rehabilitation, vocational rehabilitation, we have to involve many people in this uh, phenomenon. Otherwise, we are not be able to do even a 0.00001% also. So we have to increase the number. We need to liaison with all uh, aims, professional bodies, so that we can train as many as people possible, including the school agencies, many people. Uh, we have to be innovative in each, which, and uh, simple word I can say is we, we, know, we don't, we should not leave the mental health services only to the mental health professionals. We have to go beyond and involve, involve everyone in this endeavor. Uh, Rajendra, would you like to add anything else? Like, as you suggested, sir, like even the training of the uh, caretakers, they are there, uh, improving uh, or liaison with uh, women and child department where uh, they can make the basic reports uh, which is available to us. Uh, much more important is also uh, to have a plan like how uh, a collective approach from the different teams can have a follow-up of them. So that is something which I totally agree. I think we need a much more multidisciplinary, cohesive approach. It is not just as psychiatrists for us uh, possible that uh, we don't have enough numbers just for all the psychiatrists to take on this burden. And especially with the dilemmas, the things associated with the child, it's not just one individual. It's a whole family that gets affected. So I think we do need to broaden our scope and involve as many people as possible because that way we can do justice to the child. So yeah, I totally agree with what you said. Thank you, Sanjay. And one more thing just to add is because many a time uh, the people who are in this uh, group will be thinking it's biological in nature. Yes, of course, there is biology, but the environment plays a major role. Imagine if you are, if you are going to put, play example, simple example, very crude concrete example. If you put a seed to grow, of course, if the environment is harsh, the, the seed will never grow. Let me be very clear. If the environment is conducive, definitely the seed will germinate and become a plant and a tree and it will become good. Otherwise, if the environment is harsh, it will never grow. Let's be very clear about this. So both environment and biology plays an important role. So uh, let's be very clear about that. We are unable to change the biology at this point of time. Even if you change the biology, you need to have a good environment. Without that, it will not express. Go to the chairperson, please. Uh, thank you, sir. There are many questions in the chat box. If the chairperson allow, we can uh, take uh, them. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll start with a simple question. Suppose an act is committed before the age of 18, and now in the processing, it has come from Dr. Dr. Rajendra to Dr. Suresh. So what laws will be applied to the case? It has transitioned from one department to other department. Okay, good. Uh, the question is interesting because the act looks into it. What was the age of the child when the conflict, conflict with law occurred? 
imagine if the child has committed the child was involved in the conflict with law when it was at the age of 17 okay and the child is absconding and the child is apprehended at the age of 20 so it will be again the the case will be considered the child is 17 at the time of commission of the crime not when the child was apprehended not when the child trial starts so this is our own arrangement within the hospital telling that till 18 dr rajendra will see after 18 dr suresh will see invariably what is happening is in every opd we are getting two to three cases of adults who have already become 18 invariably that is the current status because of covid many of this jj board was not occurring and they were given bail granted bail or basically been custody was given to the parents now they are coming for assessment they around 5 6 children are produced who are already adult now and we have to retrospectively assess 2 years back when the child was involved in the crime now the child is already adult that means you have to be innovative in going back retrospectively assessing the child's mental capacity around 2 years back or 1 and 1/2 years back when the child had committed the crime so it's it's very difficult if you ask me the law is fractured here it was supposed to be the assessment has to be done within 3 months if it is not done the benefit of doubt has to be given to the child uh, so in this in this scenario whether dr rajendra does the assessment dr suresh does the assessment or somebody else even a private psychiatrist does the assessment essence of the jj act has to be kept in the mind that's i would like to respond in that rajendra would you like to add anything else sir uh, i agree with you sir like the the delay happens because of many procedural uh, difficulties and lack of uh, exclusive uh, manpower at the disposition from the jj board so usually a police constable from that police station need to coordinate as uh, that has been a, a huge challenge uh, for facilitating the child rights and to uh, have the uh, evaluation and assessment conducted on the right time so some uh, advises and some ways we can think is an exclusive team for facilitating such uh, uh, consultations and such assessments on a given point of time uh, that will also facilitate uh, the whole process and it can prevent uh, what uh, that the procedures which law asks us to abide that if we are not able to abide uh, irrespective of that the age the child if the crime when the crime has happened that age is considered as the uh, important factor in situations needed they will do the Uh, age assessments also uh, by the medical examination to ascertain uh, during the situation they tend to have those reports also so age uh, and the presentation doesn't change the way in which you want to assess the given event and give a report but memory biases definitely will be there they will make the uh, assessment little not little very uh, compl- uh, complex that can also be acknowledged even in the report i'll give one simple example of the procedural error procedural problems a uh, simple example is mental health care act that is the best example i can give you is now there are mental health review boards are formed which are chairpersons are judges or retired judges they know only the procedures law procedures and substantial law now what is happening is if the patient wants to challenge the admission under section 89 90 he has to give an application in writing format of the application when it has to be given and when it comes the board when it is sitting they will go through that and they will make a copy and they want a copy of the file where the child is at where the person is admitted the copy of the file the application then they will send it to the psychiatrist telling that why did you admit you are violating the law and then after one week of time the psychiatrist will respond then the then this mental health review board will like give a time or a date to hear think about section 89 this procedure of filing a complaint application should be written along with the copy of the file has to be given and to know whether the child, whether the person had capacity or not this procedure will take another 3 or 6 months by the time the child, the person is been admitted treated and he will be waiting for the second episode to come that is the procedure we are entering into it which is a adversarial procedure unwanted procedure instead of 
taking what we have discussed in mental health regulation is the decision has to be taken in 3 days that is the essence but unfortunately these review boards many of them are not there even if it are is there they are thinking of this procedure how to be done and this the, the essence of the law is lost here same thing is happening with jj board the jj board wants to reintegrate the child to the society back but this procedure filing getting the sir done social investigation report and social background report after that they will ask for preliminary assessment and the time and the date of hearing is given after one month or two months and they have to go and meet the psychiatrist if they come late they it is not available psychiatrist does not leave and the psychiatrist doesn't know he will say you go to the other medical college they have been trained it goes on and on and on uh, the whole essence is lost in the process of the name of procedure okay uh, alin ye 18 saal wala question ke sath i will continue so if a person just completed 18 and he has committed a crime and it is found he was brainwashed about the crime since childhood and is there any importance of the social investigation report and social sbr or he would get benefit of doubt once the child crosses 18 it will be tried as an adult and those uh, so circumstances around the crime brain washing all those things will not play a role here because we, see now our law earlier it was 18 and after the nirbhaya case we have brought it from 18 to 16 16 to 18 any any as crime preliminary assessment is done now we are talking about 18 and above 18 and above our society is not ready to accept this 16 to 18 forget about 18 and above so those circumstances will never be considered here we are fighting going back to 18 to remove the 16 so that these whatever felonious crime we deal them as a children rather than asking one more report social investigation report social background report preliminary assessment report then conduct the proceedings it, it's delay in procedure is occurring every day so instead of that you are telling 18 definitely our society will not accept our law will not accept even if it is one hour after 18 18 years today night 12 o'clock and at 1 o'clock he does the crime he will be considered as an adult and society will not forgive him and the law will say you are adult we will punish you that's it it will be considered in the adult court not even in the child's court also jj board is very far uh, sir what is the essence of jj act uh, rajendra has spoken you can add essence of the jj act sir you have to unmute dr rajin please unmute so uh, yes sir so the essence is there is like the act has few pages sir around 25 to 30 but there are uh, that has a very elaborate rules of around 300 pages the whole uh, process is that to uh, uphold the child rights see and look for the need for uh, child's uh, development what are the difficulties the child would have faced many such situation where as sir was pointing out those who are involved in conflict with law are also the children who need care and protection how best we not pull them into legal system allow them to develop and reform and get rehabilitated in the society so that the society at the large will have a higher benefit so to highlight to uphold the child rights in all Uh, steps coming from uh, apprehension of the uh, uh, person who is the child who is in conflict with law the legal procedures and the process of rehabilitation in all these contests how we can uphold the child rights and how we can uh, utilize the knowledge of uh, child risk factors that can affect the child development and also ensure that the rehabilitation can be Uh, taken part the the more concern most concerning part of whole exercise is that that the rehab part even though there are rules how much they are followed how much uh, this has been asked or reviewed this is the uh, biggest challenge in the current scenario so uh, that is one part if it gets strengthened as servers fighting out from the manpower training 
systems to follow up and uh, liaison with uh, multiple systems uh, it can make a larger change for children at the given context and to the society at the large so sir, just a small follow up question how much is the gap left suppose uh, how much how much path has to be covered to to cover this child rights and reform later on uh, earth to moon and back to moon to earth <laughs> see i'll simple example i'll give essence you asked no just uh, thoughts running wild i took time from rajendra to answer this simple example i will give you the freedom is there for a child when it is born and the child is handed over to the parents that is the freedom after that somebody else will give the name somebody will say it is the you belong to this country you belong to this citizenship and the child will without asking anything it will say this is i am this is my religion i belong to this society this uh, geography everything is given by somebody else i don't have anything that is the environment we are in think about this till you hand it over to somebody else during that 5 minutes you are a human being you don't have name the name will say which religion you are where you are coming from till that period once it is handed over to the parents the parents will give the name religion country socio economic status you are from bandra or you are from malad or you are from somewhere else that is given by somebody else environment is giving us so here the child there is been tutored by the environment that is the reason the jj act says that environment is the main key factor where the child is involved in the crime so don't punish the child the child needs to be reintegrated into the society keep the child rights upheld don't treat the child as a criminal the child has to be requiring though the child is involved in the conflict with law the child requires care and protection the child's the bail has to be given bail means by a default the child has to be handed over to handed over to the parents and the child reads to be upheld in every step of the case the judge who is sitting there as a jj board chairman he will not address the child as a kaidi or number like this he has to treat the child as a child and you can't call the child as an accused or a criminal the child who requires care and protection though he has involved in the conflict with law that is the essence and see how we can reintegrate the child that is the essence i would i'm just giving those a crude example think about this till the birth from handing over the child to the parents imagine the child is given to somebody else from one religion to one another country how the child will differ, develops in a different environment that that is the best example i can think of jj abo jj act essence okay thank you so much amrit there are two questions by dr sazia siddiqui so one of the questions is um, impulsive heinous crime versus planned crime is the approach different and another example she has given that exam crime done out of fit of rage or anger versus a crime committed to complete a challenge in games like a blue whale where the consequences are not understood is the approach different when when we when you approach such cases okay uh, rajendra would you like to respond <clears throat> sir for, for the first scenario uh, it definitely points out towards the risk for recidivism like uh, was it uh, in the peer pressure was he was a person who was accompanying them was there a person who was an adult who was tutoring him so in that situations even if there is quite an amount of planning uh, it will not add on uh, to the risk for the recidivism in the second part where if he is the whole and sole person and the crime is very serious and he had uh, uh, the planning that can be highlighted in recidivism and usually the cases who come with such an heinous uh, offenses where they have murdered someone is uh, very uh, less oftenly seen to add on to the previous discussion which was going on what has been the benefit of this whole process definitely imagine if this percentage of children would have not brought into this system and this procedure and they would have been an adult and they repeated a crime what would have happened to them versus they understand the system they understand the situation at least they get some feedback in the whole the process even a small portion of them uh, tend to get into a uh, track where they can reform themselves 
definitely it will add on to the uh, benefit i would like to add on to that see if you consider the child the prefrontal cortex is still developing 16 to 18 20 that means the inhibition part is not at fully developed the child will have impulsivity whether we like it or not that is the reason raging hormones in adolescent we say so that is the reason this concept whether we should keep it 18 16 we are debating but invariably they do not have the inhibitory role that means they will be impulsive definitely similarly if you take uh, just for a minute we will forget about the uh, the commission of crime was done by a child can we let we consider as an adult a adult who is driving rashly in an impulsive manner suddenly meets with an accident and the, somebody else comes that fellow dies that is an accident without a motivation that means mens rea is not there only the physical act contrary to the law is there so invariably the maximum punishment will be 2 years there that is rash and negligent act causing a death of a person that is again medical negligence that is the gross medical negligence that comes into picture imagine in a child who has prefrontal cortex is not developed to that level he is unable to inhibit himself let's understand ourselves only at the age of 14 15 16 the amount of things we have done we have broken the law we have done lot of things but we have not caught we if we are caught we should have been again going to the jj board but any anyway, now they say okay is a child let's rehabilitate him otherwise most of us would have been behind the bars if we consider the law and if you had broken the law so invariably in another example i can give recently it happened around i think 16 year old child mother was telling don't watch internet or with the child was playing pubg and the mother took the mobile phone the child took the knife and stabbed the her to death so it's it's look at the way now should we consider as internet addiction was it impulsivity i would rather say yes the child required care and protection because the father was not there the father is missing after giving birth the father went away and he is staying with an another woman that is the story of the whole thing and now the case is the child is under assessment with us now he is an adult and the mother is not there he is on street imagine how would we deal this child now so should we deal it as an adult or should we consider as a child who required care and protection under that situation the society failed to recognize the child is in a difficult situation and we put the same on the same platform is not that is not right to equality we have to assess in a different way because both are in a, we can't consider that as a that definitely that is where our role comes in considering the circumstances around the event and then we have to give importance what was the impulsivity what was the family environment those then we have to rehabilitate and definitely i'll tell you that we can rehabilitate those child children okay so sir uh, question in the chat box that does uh, that means poverty lack of knowledge lack of resources these children will be much predisposed to be in conflict with the law definitely many of our psychiatrists do not know mental health care act and without knowing them they admit so can we consider them as committing a huge crime so similarly many of our children who are there on streets i am telling you 2 crore children i was shocked actually when i was reading these reports i was shocked 2 crore children who are on streets and we are least bothered least bothered in means as a collective society i am telling you who require support who require help from the collective society not only the government everybody mm mm-hmm. so how 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 can this be corrected as a society everybody should fight for the children's rights they are the future of our society or the country you can call it as or maybe the humanity how we deal with them will be the future what we are going to see so and i don't have answers for that definitely i'm telling you if the whole society should answer rather than uh, one dr asendra or dr suresh or tufan patil sir answering is not possible as a collective society we should sit and then we have to say what we are doing is wrong we need to correct ourselves and start moving towards it absolutely amrit so as a corollary to that question is there any punishment for environmental factors persons which leads to crime definitely rajendra would you like to answer that the people who are co accused with the child making the child to commit crime maybe sir, peddling sir the jj act has many sections uh, which uh, are not uh, quite not very often and more often overlooked 
uh, starting from section 85 and 86, which talks about uh, giving children's alcohol is a crime. So, but pubs are giving for below 18. So there is a violation of law. Uh, starts from there. So the person who tutors the child to be involved in this alleged offence, he can be punished twice. Means his punishment will be doubled to involve an uh, underage child. But these sections are not evoked. Many time when uh, police officers bring these children, that is the advice I want to make. Especially they will know the local areas and those situations. I make them a request that why can't you evoke these sections? Uh, because that is where uh, the challenges are there, which are the JJ Act is not getting implemented in the whole spirit. That. that involvement of the child in the jj acts itself from an adult the adult he can be filed one more section for this uh, whole process for uh, leading to the such situations just ten seconds what about the father who left the child <clears throat> and married somewhere else the suresh badamat case and the child stabbed his mother when he came in the way of the gangs Yeah. what is the penal provision for him uh, definitely i don't have the answer for that sir definitely he needs to be taken into task because now the child is in a difficult circumstances definitely they have a role to play without that uh, it's it's very uh, see you can't just blame the child completely the father is also an important role to play but unfortunately the role was missing there and i don't have the answer for that sir seriously i'm telling you i don't know okay uh, sir uh, another question from the chat box how much time is usually taken in uh, doing this preliminary assessment usual average time what you guys take rajendra your side from children when you are doing assessment i'll say about that adult sir usually we try to finish off in uh, two sessions one for assessment and one for intervention if we feel that the crime is Uh, where there are uh, more factors of recidivism then we take another uh, one or two additional sessions to document them uh, and to make a report in the best interest of the child so usually that is a situation very rarely such uh, scenarios arise where uh, the children have been involved in such a crime which can lead to a lot of emotional trauma in them as uh, servers giving a case scenario where they involve in Uh, uh fight with a close member they lose someone or there are such situations where they have significant abuse uh, we tend to admit them with the court orders and then uh, give a report regarding the intervention how the child has participated in the whole process uh, uh, overall a summary of that also okay from the adult side when the child has become adult I'll give one example. This happened around six months back. Rajendra was also involved in the care. A 18-year-old boy was brought for arrested for a heinous offence, uh, have doing rape, and the child was become pregnant. This occurred during the COVID. the The boy is now arrested. No, was 17-year-old, and the girl is 14-year-old. They fell in love. They had an intercourse. the child became pregnant and during the covid she did not tell the mother by the time they realized it was already 5 months the child was pregnant and the mother went to the gynecologist they gave a complaint the child was arrested and again bail was given now by the time when he reached it was 18 years and when he came to our ward he had imagine he is 18 year old he had 6 months old child at home how home means they are not married also because marriage cannot be done because he is 18 the girl is still 15 or 15 and a half and they have that means 15 year old child has a 6 months old child and there is no marriage the boy has come with his mother they don't want to get him married to that girl because she belongs to a different caste or something and we had an opportunity usually i insist for admission we brought the parents of this boy and we discussed what are the issues why it happened whether they are going to get married or not we called the girl who is around 15 year old 
and she has a child she carried a child 6 months old child she was brought we did the assessment and both of them want to get married and the jj board sensitivity should be taken into consideration because if they are very sensitive they will give they will see how we can rehabilitate the whole family so that time we need to admit and do the necessary invariably in as a forensic psychiatry unit usually i insist for admission because in a one assessment two assessment will not be unravel we will not be able to know the whole assessment because you will be doing a physical act of taking the box you will not be able to understand the family situation invariably i ask for admission do the thorough assessment if possible contact the victims see how we can do something to the victim also not only for the accused then only will be able to do the justice so then our students who are dealing the situation they will be able to understand the comprehensively the whole situation so i invariably ask for admission and invariably i take one week at least to submit the report okay sir who is there on the jj board who all people are there uh rajendra cha yeah, unmute rajendra three members board rajendra you are not unmuted sorry sorry sir so usually there is a uh, the head will be the magistrate followed by accompanied by a male and female person who have social work background and they can have additional psychologist also on the board so they want to represent not only a legal body there but also a mental health expert who can uh, have a say in the uh, decision so that they can recommend the child rights usually the jj board has such uh, usually they sit on twice a week uh, on specific days to hear the cases and predominant focus will be on rehabilitation and understanding the uh, environmental circumstances in the amendment also a psychiatrist both in cwc and jj board also no if i remember in cwc the psychiatrist name was not there they have added now actually mental health expert they have mentioned sir. mentioned right Uh, sir a practical question suppose uh, a person is sitting in opd and a child come is brought who is in conflict with the law so what are points should i write in my prescription or the file so that uh, most of the things are covered so so i am covering all the aspects see the preliminary assessment pro forma is there many of the jj board who are learned judges are there they will insist for this this preliminary pro forma no, no, no. i am not doing a formal assessment suppose a, a patient a, a child is brought to me as a uh, uh, as a first contact so so what what all things should i uh, specifically not miss in the history the first and the foremost is you have to do the <clears throat> know what are the reasons the child has been referred what are the accompanying letters are there considering it has been sent by the jj board what are the circumstances and i would definitely admit them one if you are they are refusing for many a time they don't admit they say we have not told we are the parents have not come nobody is there i am alone these are the situation it happens if we, then i would document a link that these are the letters accompanying these are the things these are the identity mark of the child this is the mole available this is the condition the child is refusing to get admitted or nobody is there for admission police is refusing for admission and then at least i will do the preliminary assess, preliminary clinical work up whether the child requires is it a psychosis is there substance abuse is there from where the child is coming is there any can anything can be done in that process the documentation becomes say, very important and that documentation at least will require at least 20 minutes to know whether the child can to be admitted now or else the child is seeking for some more time like one of the child came and said sir i have my exams now please give me time i'll come and get admitted though there is a case going in jj board give me time so then i have to mention that since the child is asking for time he has to attend for 10th standard examination i will be doing assessment after the completion of exam that is so and so date till then we request the board to give extra time so these are the minimum things and anything else you would like to add uh, rajendra with regard to similarly whatever you do in cgc those uh, requirement has to be done rajendra uh, sir, sir, be- what i wanted to know the case is not yet with the jj board and uh, the child has come to me uh, i think that it may go to the jj board or it may be referred later so so the first contact doctor a psychiatrist what things should he uh, he or she keep in mind the case is not yet in the jj board it is expected to go there uh this is a situation where you are uh, giving an hypothesis 
if the child is involved in a heinous crime okay Probably. if it is a poxo act yes you have a role to play there you have because there is an obligation if the child is not involved in a poxo case and the means protection of children in sexual offence of 2012 if it is not involved in that you don't have an obligation to report to the police but however if it is a cognizable offence you need to report as a part of the uh, fundamental duties of the duties of the citizen you have to report but in that situation you need to document minimal things and refer the case to the uh, child, juvenile protection police there you have to do or sgp you special juvenile police you need to refer to them and ask for the so what, what are the minimal things that that need to be documented that i wanted to ask that is mandatory there is in uh, poxo act if the accused is there what is the accused address name possible commission you came to know you don't write that the child has committed a crime or involved in the crime you say as reported by the child or as reported by the family members it appears to be that the child was involved in conflict with law maybe that needs to be investigated and then you will document the possible address whatever they have given where the child is there then those there are around seven points are there in the boxo if you come to know somebody is somebody has committed the crime who are those people whether the parent wants to give complaint or not the family members address where they can go mobile number possible who is the accused or the victim's name if you are able to get that those minimum information you need to collect and document but again you are you are not giving a verdict telling that the child is involved in the crime or committed the crime possibility maybe they are the child is involved this needs to be investigated further those are the words you need to use but in poxo it is very clear but in jj they have not told what are the things need to be documented if the first contact you are there okay amrit uh, we have a uh, we have one of our colleagues here dr bibhu kalyan sir who has a practical question to ask here there is someone from the you know dr bibhu please 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 ask hello sir sir uh, i am uh, um, i am regularly attending uh, juvenile justice board in my area so usually the problem occurs is uh, actually we are given a small place where uh, obviously me the judge and uh, one more member uh, at times two members they sit together we all sit together and uh, with escort team the uh, usually the child in the conflict with law he comes now first of all the child denies that uh, he has committed that crime now because as you said it is not a trial now please let me do i will take all the data rest of the data few we were taking and today i have completely taken all the snaps now i will take the rest of the thing but if he says no i have not done anything many a times the advocate has trained him such in such a manner that he will not say anything in that case what uh, we will do he has not done he was ever or not ever the reason consequences so please okay i see i would put it uh, simply as a forensic psychiatrist i would rather say i will consider every child is an innocent that is the pre- that is the premise i will start i will do the assessment whether the child requires any psychiatric support does it require the child is in uh, who requires care that is basically the child has been neglected abused what is the surrounding it is coming up whether there is a psychiatric disorder in there whether there is intellectual disability whether there is a substance abuse those are the things i will say i don't want to look into the crime part at this point of time when the child is produced of course everybody will deny that is the role of the state to prove that whether the child or the person has been accused as a medical profession i would like to go is there my role to rehabilitate the child reintegrate the child into the society whatever the crime it is i would think in that direction rajendra would you like to add sir uh, the setup may be posing a challenge Uh, usually if you are sitting in a board and uh, there are other members uh, that uh, will not create a space uh, for the child or parents to open up regarding the challenges they would have faced or even how they would have affected the child usually when they come as i said two days in the first day uh, we will try to interact uh, explain them uh, that our whole process is to understand the factors and then uh, giving a feedback to them to work on it so one is the setup uh, second is uh, even if they have said the crime has happened or not you start exploring the psychosocial factors uh, why he left the school why he was uh, been into the labor who are his friends what he wants to do about that like how uh, usually uh, mothers uh, when they when they get to know that 
uh, if they tell something which are the factors which they would have faced or the child has doesn't affect the outcome of the law they become more comfortable and open up that will give a uh, space to give a, a valuable feedback and also to empower the caretaker usually if you hold them that you you are out of the school you are uh, going uh, with friends who are not good that has been there in this report or there is a possibility you give us in writing what you will do to keep yourself safe you plan you let us know the whole agenda is to have a factors and ask him to plan and empower the parents if you can move out and have the child have a dialogue i think this uh, process will become a possibility sir thank you thank you sir. okay amrit i think last question uh, last it can be done in private setup and government setup or both and can it be refused uh, let me be very clear the jj board doesn't say it has to be government it can be done by anybody and if you ask me it is a duty of every citizen to take care of the child let's be very clear about this uh, yes as a private practitioner you may not be paid of course it is your time and involving in the child care rehabilitation sessions it requires a huge amount of time uh, i don't know whether my perspective would have changed if i was a private practitioner since i am working in a government and i am paid by the government but the law doesn't say it has to be only government or private so that is the reason jj board will say send him to the government if the if the jj board says that the family is able to pay or the jj board tomorrow says that this has to be given uh, money has to be given from the government and the private is able to do or ngo is able to do excellent many a time what is happening is ngos are involved in the care of the child many a time the child has been involved in the crime there is no what is that juvenile home or what we call it as the home where the child will be kept ngos are roped in and many a time those are the best place where the child will be given at least some amount of support than being in a government setup so it's it's a combination where there is no hard and fast rule it has to be government that is my answer uh, rajendra the law doesn't specify it uh, and uh, uh, usually jj board uh, personnel uh, define that uh, they may have liaison with ngos they may have uh, liaison with hospitals or medical colleges uh, that is the current uh, scenario uh, uh, what comes up uh, we are not sure like uh, that magistrates call is the one which makes it final and can a person refuse this assessment can a psychiatrist refuse <laughs> you can't say that i have not been paid especially in the uh, if the child is involved in conflict with law i would rather say don't refuse try to do your best one many a time what happens is even the well known psychiatrist unless i was involved in forensic psychiatry started working with rajendra i have learned lot of things being i am his teacher but i am also a student with him so i learned lot of things environmental aspects and uh, looking into the family perspective i also learned so it, it's it's basically learning process and many of our psychiatrists who are there they are they don't know ask somebody call them your seniors maybe your teachers call them they will guide you and involve them and uh, what happens is in uh, earlier in nimans any crime anything was happened they used to say send them to nimans now at least many of our younger students who are working in dmhp in the medical colleges they call us and say what can i do sir i want to learn please teach me i would like to get involved in this jj board i want to rehabilitate there are youngsters who are learning we are guiding them and the case which i told you uh, the where the child was stabbed the mother here that was taken care by one of the medical college our own student who is working there he is now dealing with the child so we need to help them so that they also learn one or two cases they do third case they will be starting uh, they will be very confident in dealing with the case thank you sir over to chair persons for the remarks thank you so much dr alim bhai uh, our speakers dr suresh baramat and dr rajender are wonderful they, they are the master to present and to the they did the justice with the topic and uh, uh, now uh, we have finished our nerves 99 and now we have entered into the next century so from next uh, thursday we will start from the hundreds uh, episodes of this master class congratulations to the whole team uh, and i like uh, at the end i now i uh, would like to hand over to the our other chairperson dr sanjay 
it was a wonderful session as usual nothing less expected from dr suresh padamath and of course dr rajender was wonderful as well there were some really practical tips and i think this is a very important topic which we often neglect so hats off to the thursday musings team for organizing this and best of luck for the next session thank you thank you tofan sir so please unmute thanks a lot dr suresh padamath and dr rajender and i i really appreciate the statement of dr badasa that we are we should be concerned about the two four plus children and the street but necessarily because they are at least in some medical case they may not be but we should have a concern for them we need we need to solve and the children mean the future if you do not prevent of them from becoming real criminals after 18 We may be the subjects with the group social. I compliment for you for your statement. Uh, just one question: Why have you preliminary assessment in your experience and at the trial level? Have you ever recommended any child that he should go for a trial like adults? If so, for on which ground? Because that is also a possibility. Rajendra, would you like to respond first, or shall I respond? As you say, sir. Like okay, I have been doing assessment in many of the cases. At least around uh, currently, one of the our PDF, uh, Doctor Pankaj, uh, who is doing PDF in forensic psychiatry, his thesis on this actually preliminary assessment. What is the way? What is happening? How many are positive report? Or how many are negative report? We are done that. We are doing the analysis. Uh, roughly, what we feel is thirty uh, to forty percent. We are considering them as uh, involved in the crime. and they have the mental capacity to commit the crime and they were involved in the crime which is a heinous crime and invariably it was a planned act and they waited for the opportunity and they have committed the crime and invariably there were many anti social anyway elements were involved we have given the report telling that yes they have been positive at least 30 to 40% uh, roughly i am giving i don't have the exact number and uh, we are proposing to follow up these kids hope we get the funding for that and then i'll be able to tell yes what we did after giving the report where they were taken whether they were taken to the child's court and then they were put in the prison or under jj board and they were able to rehabilitate that follow up after maybe 5 years 10 years there are amazing reports are available in western country in india we don't have we miss them out that should not happen so at this point of time it is around 20 to 30% we are telling them they are possibly involved and they have they have to be tried as an adult otherwise i look it from the angle of environment and we will be considerate how the crime was committed rajendra yes so we uh, have seen uh, cases where uh, more they have been a, a person with adults as a uh, crime they were involved as a team members uh, there are very few cases where uh, there was serious heinous crimes and we felt uh, it is quite concerning and there is a, a higher risk so we try to highlight the risk for recidivism uh, that we said these are the factors which makes this uh, situation more challenging and we wish to uh, we we ask you to take the necessary action so uh, luckily one few cases came back and uh, i was able to see a change in one of them and see how things were working so uh, yes we have not made a frank recommendation as for the transfer but we have highlighted uh, regarding the risk for recidivism when they were very high and we have uh, we have done that part in them in three four cases where we felt the risk is very high we have elaborately documented on that uh, so that the judge can take a call on that thank you sir amrit over to you Uh, so it was as usual like dr suresh badamat told that i was told two days before the 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 whole thing so you are always a go to man dr suresh so you are our backbone so we we rely on you also so thank you so much for accepting our request within two days you are always well prepared well read so it is not a big thing for you so but what i would request you can we have a workshop on this maybe in the next ansips or somewhere definitely rajendra and we are there and also even professor shekhar shradri is very passionate
make yeah, about we this. We can have a workshop. You know, we can have a separate workshop on this. Uh, if Dr. Tufan sir agrees, he's the organizing chairman of the NCPD. Yes, fine. I will. I will speak with the. Actually, in IPS uh, SPC uh, seats, but I have requested formally that we want to have some sessions. It will be by plenary. Don't jumble up workshops because there are some very important things that people would like to learn. If they allow me, we shall definitely. We will, we will work on this. I think this is a very important area. We very think we important. know everything, but many times we know nothing or maybe minuses in, in, in certain areas. So, thank but you, Dr. Suresh, Dr. Rajender. Dr. Bhattabhati, one question. Sir, is a WhatsApp, it's a, in a long term, is possible than Zoom? I think we can. Yes, yes sir. If Nimans does this, we will market that. We can call Suresh and two other colleagues, sir. Why do we need to do it? Yes. Yes. I, sir, one more thing. Uh, Dr. Dr. Shekhar Shishadri is involved in Samvad, yeah, yeah, where yes, yes, they are yes. doing, uh, the, the government has given the fund. The AIMS uh, doctors, many of them have been called for the yes, workshop yes, yes, yes. in the similar way. And it's our mandate. We would like to take it up. Uh, we will discuss with uh, Dr. Shekhar Shadri. If, even if it is from funding from the government, we will definitely yes. would like to involve I, and I do think, it. I Under think it will be pertinent because the J Act, the board comprises of one judiciary and two social workers, one and the other. And they may solicit advice from experienced clinical psychologist, the exact term, experienced clinical psychologist, like a social worker, or other experts. Fortunately, we come under category of other experts are invited. But uh, by bad luck, fortunately, we are also not competent to face the situation. Most And one has to be potentiated, not only as part of the clinical, because one, the, the department invited clinical psychologist. So they have to be potentiated to do justice for the child, because a child who is innocent at that point of time, his or her future is in our hands. We cannot just game it away. I clearly understand and resonate your sentiments, Dr. Balapas. So, Thank so, you. Thank you, both of you. Dr. Suresh. Thank you, sir. And I go to man. Whenever we need medical legal issues, I just call up Suresh, Dr. Suresh. Next week, centenary episode, speaker is Dr. Dinesh Gubra. And we have, will be having the kind presence of Dr. Absur We will be sharing the flyer soon. It is being designed by Dr. Adin. I invite sir, sir, sir. everyone to be there. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Amrut. Thank you, Chairpersons. Thank you, Rajendra. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thank you all. A wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay. Thanks a lot, sir. Good night. Dr. Singer, it was a wonderful Dr. session. Thank you. Dr. Singer, I don't see him. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, sir, with your permission, can we close the meeting now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, please. can close the meeting for all yes sir i close